Evan Marshall, Speech 2. When anti-feminists talk about what kind of group the feminist movement is, they will often refer to it as a hate group, as they feel that many feminists are trying to start problems where there otherwise were none in an attempt to gain pity or something else. I feel that this is logically incorrect, as the idea behind the movement is to exact equality in America. This can happen through advocacy or confrontation when presented with the problem. So to simply write, a, write off a serious complaint as an attempt at personal gain is foolish, as more often it should be that there is a serious problem, uh, and another woman refuting this fact is more hurtful than even ignoring it. Uh, throughout American history, the government has been shaped by the people. And when the government refuses to take action on a topic the American public feels uh, is important, the American people take to the streets to force a change. Uh, to call a group of people that, simply, that are simply asking for equality that they feel uh, they do not already have uh, a hate group is certainly interesting. If for any reason you feel that an individual is being confrontational for personal gain and have means to prove it, then it would be considered that it should be considered that this individual is not even a feminist, as they are furthering the problem by adding to the stigma that many feminists deal with every day. To expand on the topic of why feminism is not hateful, but, in, uh, but instead uh, uh, is uh, done with the best intentions, I would like to talk about the purpose uh, of the large amount of advocacy. Feminists are not protesting the equality that they already have. They are protesting the rights that they feel are not being protected by the law. They only want to have the same freedoms that every other American is guaranteed, not just for themselves, but for all women, and every woman that will come. To assure that, to assume that just because the group's actions are aggressive and uh, that because the group's actions are aggressive and filled with emotion that those actions are hateful and based only on those emotions is simply not accurate. Logically speaking, it would only make sense for these feminist groups to take to the streets and protest for what they believe as, as clearly the message was missed in their votes, their position uh, in government, and the message that they are advocating for, and should continue to do so until a, chain, a clear change in how these things are handled in everyday life occurs. Would you not march in the streets if you felt that an institutionalized problem was encroaching on your everyday life in a way that makes a large impact, especially when the government already has legislation in place to protect women from things like this? Next, I would like to talk about how the wage gap and the institutionalized problems in modern businesses affect everyday life for a woman, and how these problems are institutionalized beyond what happens in the workplace. When a feminist talks about the wage gap in the, in the workplace, she will almost always point to a statistic that encompasses all women. Uh, to disregard uh, the wage gap in its entirety because you think that the most common statistics that are used are simply false and therefore disregard the concern entirely is very nearsighted. Uh, feminists will often state a statistic like this not to explain the situation entirely, but rather to credit the facts behind the wage gap to those that don't believe in its existence. There are many studies that have been conducted on the topic that prove the very uh, that prove this point very well, but to expect a feminist to stop mid conversation or debate to explain and cite all of these studies simply to justify the statement in your own eyes is childish. Uh, the security, uh, the scrutiny that is institutionalized from the very beginning of education against women in the workplace is extremely impactful on the pay and progress of women in the workplace. So for a feminist in the workplace who may mention the wage gap openly is uh, probably feeling as if the problems of uh, discrimination are at work. And so to then be scrutinized by another woman would simply make their arguments look 
invalid, even if you only believe that the wage gap does not exist, and do truly believe that uh, there are problems that need to be dealt with. To conclude, anyone should back up a, femi uh, a woman in the workplace who feels that discrimination has occurred, but to have a woman refute clear facts to her face is, is in a possible debate where others may have been swayed away from, discrimi or from possible discrimination in the future is childish at best and self-destructive at worst.